you have your Bibles, open them to Romans chapter 5 this morning. We're going to finish up Romans chapter 5. I appreciate that special, Brother Van. It's always a treat when Brother Van sings. Uh, Amen. You know, uh, whenever I first came uh, there for a while, he sang about every Sunday to make sure we had a special. And I really enjoyed it. And uh, I've always enjoyed hearing Brother Van sing. Uh, this morning... Our sermon title is going to be One Man. It's the name of our sermon. Um, I wasn't going to do this, then I was going to do it, then I wasn't going to do it, but I, I'm just going to do it and let the Lord do it, see what happens. But uh, there's a song that goes with this message pretty well. And so uh, I'm going to sing this morning before I preach. Uh, if I get off key, it just may happen. But uh, that's why I wasn't going to do it. But. Uh, if I get off key, you know, Brother Terrell said, if you can't carry a tune in the bucket, don't get up here. And so uh, I'm, not, I'm not listening, and so I'm going to try and do my best. But this song, at, at the very least, just listen to the words of this song because uh, uh, they're, they're, they're very powerful. Uh, starting there in verse 12, 
of Romans chapter 5. We're going to finish out the chapter. And it begins in verse 12 saying, Whereas by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. <coughs> but not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if though the offense of one, many be dead, listen to this, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. And we can say amen right there. Amen. <clears throat> and not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. There's that word again that we've talked about so much. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the grace a gift of righteousness shall reign in the life by one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by one the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came unto all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Amen. That, the, that, that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so grace may reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Let's have a word for it. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you this morning with such grateful and thankful hearts for the grace that we are awarded by Jesus Christ. Lord, though we don't understand it, though we don't deserve it, we know that you give us your grace. It's, it's free. It's a gift. We did nothing to earn it, but you freely gave it. Lord, I thank you so much for that. Lord, I ask you to be with us this afternoon, uh, this morning rather, uh, that we would uh, be giving you honor and glory, that we would worship you in spirit and in truth, and that you would hide me behind the cross. I would decrease and you would increase, Lord. I ask all these things in the most precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So we've got one man. One man this morning uh, is brought sin into the world. And of course, that man is Adam, right? The father of sin, the father of, uh, uh, of all humankind, really. In a way, he was the first created being. We know the story of Adam. Uh, he was created by God. And uh, he was given dominion over all of the earth. Think about that. Hmm. Brother Patero kind of touched on this a little bit. Uh, and and the, was it Friday he preached? He touched on this a little bit. But the, the snakes, the, the tigers, the lions, the bears, oh my. Uh, you know, he probably could walk up and pet them. Uh -huh. Nothing, I mean, dominion means he was get, put in charge of all of them. The Lord took care of them. The Lord provided for them. You know, uh, I, I, I think from uh, looking at scripture that they were probably vegetarians. Uh, in the beginning, blood didn't have to be shed. Um, of course, I like my meat now. But it was perfect. You ever think, how in the world does bad things happen? It, uh, be honest. Anybody here ever thought, how could God let things happen? I have. I'll be honest if nobody else will. I thought, how could God let that happen? I've seen young children be uh, diagnosed with cancer. And lose their life. That's sad. I've seen mothers, not old, 
I've done funerals of, of a mother. Not very old, still has young children. Pass. Uh, I'm doing a funeral today of a man, 36 years old, has kids uh, who are still young, who passed from this life. And you sit and you think, how could these things happen? How could God allow these things to take place? Well, I want to tell you something. God made a perfect world. We introduce sin to it. Mm -hmm. That's right. We say Adam and we blame Adam. And if you're even better uh, than that, sometimes you can blame Eve. You know, it's that woman. But what have you done to contribute? Folks, I can tell you this. Adam may have brought sin into the world, but I've helped. I've helped carry it on. If you want to, turn with me to Genesis chapter uh, 3. We're not going to read the verses that Brother Terrell preached from because I was going to stop before there. But Genesis chapter 3, in verses 1 through 6, we see the Bible says, Now the serpent was more so than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree in the garden? So first he starts off with a lot. Back up one second. Do y'all think for one second that Satan didn't know what God said? I'm going to tell you something. Don't you ever think for one second whenever you're being tempted into something and that voice comes into your mind and says, well, it ain't so bad. Guess what? Satan knows what's right and what's wrong and he wants to lead you astray and he'll tell you whatever he's got to tell you to get you to do it. Don't listen to it. If you know what's right, I'll tell you this. I've had children ask me. I've had grown folks ask me, but more children ask me. Uh, they'll say, well, should I do this? Or uh, is it okay to do this? Or is it wrong to do this? You know what my answer is? Yeah. If you got to ask about it, it's probably not something you should do. Right. But you know why? Because it's probably something that we really want to do, but we know is probably wrong. It's God telling us, don't listen to Satan. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And we could stop and preach right there. I'm not going to. But folks with sin, don't even touch it. It says, don't, you know, God could have said, you know, don't eat of the tree. Then guess what? good. You know? I like fruit. It probably was good. I like it's probably good. It's tempting. But he said, don't even touch it. Don't even touch it. Don't even look at it. Stay away from it. That's how we ought to be about sin. Don't even look at it. Don't even touch it. Stay away from it. And the serpent said unto the woman, he told a lie, he said, you shall not surely For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, when your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was for good, good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree desired to make one wise, she took and eat thereof, of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Folks, Satan came with a lie. But more importantly, because we can't blame, like Brother Terrell said, we can't blame the devil. We can't say the devil made me do it. Eve could not say the devil made me do it, even though she tried. She couldn't say the devil made me do it. She had a choice to make. And she chose to go against God. We see very plainly in the verses ahead earlier that she knew what God said. But the desires of her heart to be wise like God. See, what's one of my favorite sayings? We gotta get self out of the way. From the beginning of time, self's been a problem. She said, Oh, I can be like God. I can have all the knowledge that God has. And you know what? This fruit, it looks good. It's good for food. 
Let's just see what it tastes like. Folks, when you give Satan an inch, he'll take a mile. And before you know it, you'll be further away from where you ought to be in the blink of an eye. Right. Stay away from it. By one man, sinner, sin entered into the world. But folks, and, and, and I won't re-preach what Brother Terrell talked about, but I will say this. From that point on, God came and was looking for them. And, and he knew where they were, but uh, he, he, he was looking for them. And he said, and, and Adam said, oh, well, well, we were naked. And so we hid from you and said, who told you you were naked? And, oh, you know, and then Brother Carroll said something I never thought about. Well, where'd they, well, how'd they know which parts to cover up, you know? It doesn't make any sense. That's a fair question. How, what, how did they even know what parts to cover up? But, you know, a child knows, you know? My kids, uh, which Finley doesn't do it so much anymore, my kids run around naked at the house, you know. Judah don't, don't care right now. He'd probably come here naked if it was really. <laughs> But uh, we try not to let that happen. But, uh, you know, but a child, as they get a little bit older, they know too. You know why? Because we have a sin nature. But told them and said, when we were naked, who told you you were naked? And said, oh, well, you know. Said, did you eat of the tree that I told you not to eat of? What did Adam say? That woman you gave me, he blamed God and Eve. Then he said, oh, that was the serpent. And Satan's just sitting back laughing. His mission was accomplished. And you know, on that very day, Adam and Eve, not only did they die spiritually, but they began to die physically. You know, it was not the will of God that any of us ever die. Think about that. God if we would have cooperated with God's plan, Adam and Eve would still be alive today. And I believe we'd still walk with Christ. We'd walk with God. Think about that. I mean, physically. Because we'd have sin to separate us. But sin entered into the world. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation. And see, uh, verse number 15 of, of Genesis chapter 3 there, uh, it, it tells the first, uh, the first uh, uh, prophecy of Jesus Christ. It tells us that the seed of woman would come. Why did the seed of woman have to come? Because now the seed of man is corrupt. Do you know, even if you had never sinned all your life, that you would still need a Savior? Because you're born to the seed of man. You're born with a sin nature. You would still need a Savior. But luckily, none of that's the case for any of us here. I don't want to call y'all some dirty sinners, but, you know, we're all some dirty sinners. Everybody. That's just the truth. By one man, sin came into the world. One man brought it. But praise the Lord, one man cured it. Right. One man cured our sin problem. It says in the far, part, second part of verse 18 there, when it said, By one offense of the one judgment that came upon uh, men the condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all man unto justification of life. Folks, we have a Savior. He cured our sin problem. He came and he died on the cross for you and for me. And I've got a few verses that tell us how it happened. How Jesus came. Well, first, we can tell you before we go into that. I love telling about the life of Christ, just even though most of us all know it. He came and he was born of a virgin. Why is that important? Well, because of what we just talked about. He had to come from a single woman. If you take the virgin birth out of it, you disqualify Christ as the Messiah. That's right. People like to disqualify, people like to say, oh, yeah. Jesus was still the Savior, but he wasn't born of a virgin. It's not possible. But folks, Jesus was born of a virgin. If you take it away, we don't have the gospel of Jesus Christ, but he was born of a virgin. So it's impossible. It's nothing's impossible with God. Amen. Amen. God did it. Jesus came. He left his glory in heaven. He came humbly. You know, they were taught throughout the years that there would be a Messiah come. And throughout the years, even though they told them, you look at Old Testament prophecy, they tell you exactly who Jesus was going to be. They had got it in their head that he was going to be this great military power. 
probably was going to be born into a wealthy, rich family. Maybe even, maybe even a son of a high priest. Uh, his dad was probably going to be uh, in the Sanhedrin. You know, he's going to be this powerful guy. <coughs> so Jesus came humbly, born of a virgin, to a young girl. There's, there's thoughts that in, in history dictates that Mary was probably 13 or 14, which was normal. Okay, back in those days, she was betrothed to be married. She was fixing to get married. Uh, Joseph is a carpenter. Has to work hard for what he has. They they don't they don't have uh, an abundant of, of different things, but what they did have, they were good people who were godly folks who were chose by God to raise his son. You think about what an honor that would be. For God to find such favor in you that his only begotten son that was to come and die on the cross, he would give him to you. Jesus grew up. He, 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 he learned and he grew and he followed the Father. When he was about 12 years old, we find that he says, don't you know I must be about my father's business to his parents? So from a very young age, Jesus Christ knew what he was come to do. He lived a perfect life. Around the age of 30, he began his earthly ministry. He goes, and listen to this. I'm going to throw this in there. He goes out on the seashores of Galilee, and he says, come and I'll make you fishers of men. That's where the church started. Amen. That's where the church started. These men who were no better than anybody else, some fishermen, they probably stunk. Root guys. He calls them and says, come follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. And they drop their nets and they follow Jesus. They gave up everything. We can preach about that too. They dropped it. Their livelihood. You know, if they didn't catch enough fish, they didn't eat. Their families didn't eat. They dropped it and followed Jesus. How many of us have faith like that? Say, Lord, I don't know how you're going to do it. I don't know how you're going to make this work. But I'm going to trust in you. That's what we ought to feel. That's what we ought to do. So sometimes we take our own, you know, we put self in there. We say, this just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Following Christ sometimes doesn't make any sense. But you can rest assured that God will take care of you. Continue on in Jesus' life. He ministers for about three and a half years. And we find him. Uh, in the garden and he's praying with sweat drops of blood pouring out of his face Lord I know what your will is but if it, please if it be possible let this cup pass from me my sin put him in that position he knew he was going to have to bear the sins of the world then he spoke something that I don't know if I could have done He said, I don't want to do this. If it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not what I want. I want your will to be done. Amen. We ought to take a lesson out of Jesus' book right there. Even though we don't want to do it, even though we don't think it makes sense, even though, listen to this. Listen to this. I may do it for a bit. Listen to this. <laughs> Even if it ain't fair, you think it was fair that Jesus had to hang on that cross and die though he had done nothing wrong? How many of you think that one just ain't fair? Listen. Jesus Christ. If there's anybody that's ever had a right to say it wasn't fair, it's Jesus Christ. Yet he did it anyway. He did it anyway. Listen. Well, we, we say, well, Lord, it just ain't fair. You're blessing so-and-so over there, and they don't even live for the Lord. They don't even live for you. But I'm over here trying my best, and I can't even get half of what they got. Listen, they've already gained their reward. You listen? My reward is not in this place. Amen. My reward is not here on earth. My reward isn't the praise and the the, the, 
the, the smiles and the waves from man. My joy and my, my future and my blessings are in heaven. Amen. And I'm looking forward to it. Jesus got on the cross after he was beaten, ridiculed, slapped, put the crown of thorns on his head, blood running down into his eyes, can't see. And despite what the pictures show you, when they put Jesus Christ on the cross, he was completely naked to lay and be there and be humiliated. He's got, I told you before about the Romans and how they were they were master torturers and they knew Jay had figured out just how to make everything hurt as possible as could be without killing you right off. And I told you about that funny bone nerve. I don't even know what nerve it's called, but that funny bone nerve, you know, you hit your funny bone, if you got something in your hand, usually you drop it because it hurts. Not very funny. That funny bone nerve runs all the way through your body. Just we have a deal right here where, where it's pretty easily accessed, but they they put those, they, they figured out how to put those nails right through those nerves. And then it is feet. And he's hanging there by it, and, 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 and truth be told, I think I've told you before, but people didn't die on the cross because they, uh, you know, was just up on the cross. They died there most of the time from from suffocation. They, they, their arms would dislocate and they'd have to push up on the nails in that, in that nerve. They'd have to pull their self up just to get a breath. Jesus was there. And in John chapter 19, you don't have to turn there if you don't want to. In John chapter 19, we see Jesus Christ, though his back has been mutilated, and he's pushing himself up. One last time, he said he's thirsty. They give him some vinegar to add insult to anger. He pulls himself up for one last breath. And in that last breath, he said in verse 30, It is Until let's stop. It is finished. I think I've told you before, that's a banking term. Until let's stop. What he said in the Greek. It's a banking term. It, 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 you know, I always thought growing up that when he said it is finished, that he was talking about his life. That's not what Jesus was talking about at all. Until let's stop. It meant, and as I told you, it's a banking term. It meant that you had paid the debt. That's what people would say, you know, if you were called the bank on the phone and say, hey, let me check on my loan. What do I still owe on it? Said, it is finished. It's over with. The debt has been paid. Jesus Christ paid my debt. One man came and paid the sin of all mankind. Nobody's left out. Nobody's uh, uh, put aside. Everybody is being given the free gift of salvation. And it's there for the taking. All you have to do is reach out and say, Lord, I need it. Lord, I need it. I trust in you. I believe in you. And I want to spend eternity with you. Lord, I believe you come to earth and you paid my sin debt. The debt I spent on. Father had to turn his back on Jesus because of my sin. I separated Father from Son. But praise God, three days later he came out of the tomb. And one day I'm going to go and be with both of So it may be after my life, I don't know, one of two ways, one of two things going to happen. Either I'm going to die or, or I'm going to be raptured up. If I had my brothers, I'd be raptured up. Just because I don't want to die. I ain't scared of dying. I just don't want to suffer. I might be a little afraid of how I may die. But uh, one day I'm going to be with both of them. I'm going to be in the presence of Jesus Christ. I want to leave you 
with another verse, passage of scripture, one that we all know. One man brought it, and one man cured it. Isaiah chapter 53, verses 3 through 5, he is despised and rejected of men. Back up. I'm to say one thing. Jesus Christ, folks, is real. This passage of scripture that we're fixing to read was written a long time before Jesus ever came. And we're talking about him a whole lot long, a long time after he came. The Bible is real. Amen. Every word in it is pure. Every word in it is perfect. And I'm going to tell you, you can believe every single thing that is in your Bible. Mm -hmm. Said he is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as if it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Nevertheless, even through all of that, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. I'll tell you something today, folks. We got a sickness. We got a problem. All the bad things that happen in the world, all the bad things happen to you, all the bad things happen to those that you love. When you get right down to it, it's because of sin. We die because of sin. I've lost loved ones. Guess what? Sin did it. It's not God's intention for it to be that way. Yet, when God came and made this earth, and He brought mankind into it, He gave us a free will where we had a choice on whether or not we wanted to follow Jesus Christ or not. We chose the other way. We choose it more often than not, do we not? Seems I sin more than I do right. If I was God, I'd wipe me off the face of the planet. I'd get rid of it. I'd send me to hell where I belong. Those senseless sins, the ones that I know is wrong, I know is, uh, I shouldn't do, and I do them anyway, if I was God, I'd say, no, my son ain't paying for that. You willingly went against what I said, even though I gave you exactly what to do. Then I came with the Holy Spirit and told you exactly what to do, and you choose to do the opposite anyway. I'm not paying for that one. When I, I got a kid, two of them. Finley, not so much, but Judah, he's something else. <laughs> and there comes a point. I'll tell them not to do something. 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 And they do it anyway. And he'll hurt himself. And you know what I say? Don't come to me looking for no comfort. I told you, and you wouldn't do it. And then he'll go run to his mom. I told his mom, no. I told him, and he didn't. He did it anyway. And he got hurt. He's going to cry for a little while. Till I get tired of hearing him cry, then I won't tell him to us. That's not who God is at all. I'm not going to say that God will let you call flat on your face from time to time. But every time you call on him, he's there. Thank God that we have a perfect father. One man brought it. But praise God, one man cured it. We have a, a Savior that loves us. We have a Savior that cares for us. We have a Savior that is pleading with you right now. Won't you come to me? If you're here and you're lost, I'll tell you something. You don't have to leave lost. If you're here and you need Jesus Christ, you can find Jesus right here. Some people say, well, I'm going to get myself right. And if, if, if we had to get ourselves right before we came to Jesus, there'd be no need for Jesus. There'd be no need for Him. Folks, 
You let God come to you and meet you where you are, and then you let him take you where he needs you to go. I pray that if you're here today, you don't leave this opportunity without coming to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Where sin abounded, all the much more did grace abound. You can't out sin God. So I've gone too far. No, you haven't. You say, well, I can't be healed. Yes, you can. You say, well, he didn't die for my sins. That's not what the Bible said. Jesus loves you. Jesus cured your sin problem. Won't you come and accept it today? Let's all stand. If you have uh, something that God has been laying on your heart that you need to do,